What's up, you guys? Thanks for clicking on the video. Before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. So BKFC 61 went down this past weekend. We saw Jimmy Rivera get the win over Daniel Strauss via unanimous decision in the main event. And one of the stories coming out of this weekend's event is this whole fiasco that happened with Chris Sorrow's fight where it ended what I believe to be Dr. Stoppage due to a hand injury. Now shortly after the event, Chris Sorrow posted this video to his Instagram to give context as to what the hell went down. For everyone who just watched that, shit show out there. First of all, there's nothing wrong with this fucking hand. My hand has been deformed since BKFC 38. I go down to the ground, not from a punch. It was a mixture of stepping on my shoe, elbow, punch the back of the head, whatever. I, I didn't even care about that. I beat myself up more in training. I got a little fucking fingernail scratch. Nothing against Scott Roberts. That's how you fight when you're nerved up, scared, everyone's dealing with fucking emotions and it's his debut. Good on him. Fortunately, he ain't laying a clean shot on me. So when Andrew Glenn came over to me, you guys can all hear this if you want. There's nothing I can do about it. You guys all clearly see how pissed I was the second that they said that because I did not, did not do all that training and have all my family and friends and fans come out. Everyone back home watching just for some fucking official the nicest way I can put it take it upon himself to make a quick call this is our careers out here and I know Mike Mazzulli doesn't give a shit about our careers the dude's ruined more careers I'm sure he's got a fucking hit list of people oh, yeah. but he probably had me escorted because he knows that, that he's a fat piece of shit and if I got within arm's reach of him it, it would be now, I don't know if many of you tuned in to the post-fight press conference, but BKFC President Dave Feldman had some things to say about Chris Saro. Here's what he had to say. Great crowd, great fights, some not so great fights, and we'll address that now. So, you guys know I'm very, very passionate about this sport, and I fucking love it, and I live and die by it, and I cheer for it, and I boo for it, and I do whatever it takes, and these guys and girls go out there and fight their asses off for me, for you, and for the fans. And when we have a punk ass that comes in here and doesn't even get hit and lays down on his ass and quits, it's something that this organization is not going to stand for. So we're going to start a new award tonight. It's called Quitter of the Night, and that's going to Chris Sorrow because you're a punk. And you can't quit in this organization. If you want to get knocked out, that's fine. If you go out there and get fight, fight, fight your ass off and you get stopped, man, you always have a job here. If you lay down two or three fights in a row, you're done. And I don't appreciate it, and I don't think that the fans appreciate it, and I don't think the other fighters appreciate it, and we don't deserve that. So I had to call that out. Now listen, I absolutely hate when promoters bash the fighters that fight for them. But I also understand you're paying this man for entertainment to fight. It looks like Chris Sorrow ended up seeing what Dave said. He posted this the next day. That was fun. I'm back in Ellsworth, my, back in my gym, my safe place. Um, what can I say? That was a hell of a weekend. I put so much of my time and effort into this camp. And I understand that shit happens. I'm no exception to that rule, but damn. I'm going to make this one last post. I'm never going to speak about it again. I have dedicated my entire life to this sport. I was the first ever signed bare knuckle boxer out in New England. I wear those stripes proud. When I fight, I fight to the death. You know, I leave on a stretcher if I have to. What is shown on TV and reality are two different things. I'm the furthest fucking thing from a quitter. It's it's not in my DNA. You know, what happened in that fight was my opponent comes at me, you know, good on him. One hell of a commotion. I caught a fingernail to the forehead. That's about it. And uh, a couple hits to the back of the head. He was excited. I understand. Hold nothing against my opponent. Um, 
When I'm on the ground, the first thing that's said to me by the ref, and there's nothing that Andrew Glenn did wrong at all. He goes, Chris, you're good. You get five minutes. He pushed you down. I don't know if you can read his lips or not on the video. It's the first thing he says to me. You're in shock when you're out there. So no part of me is thinking, one, that I'm taking five minutes for anything. I wasn't injured. I wasn't hurt. I was razzled. You know, I didn't expect that flurry, but I was taking my time to recollect, recalibrate, and I was going to stand up, and I was going to come meet him head first, head on. When I stand up, I'm getting ready to pull towards my opponent. You see me pulling like this. There's a doctor, not from the promotion, from the commission, holding on to my hand. And I was checking my hand out to make sure I didn't do anything to it. Because I had five minutes. I was taking a second to review everything, gather myself, and stand up. He said, what's wrong with your hand? I go, it's not broken. I'm trained to fight through it. I didn't say it's broken. I said, it's not broken. The hand's not broken. He was looking at my hand because it's deformed. While he's holding my hand and I'm pulling towards the fight, I hear them say something along the lines of fight's over, his hand's broken. Kid's gonna hurt himself. You can kind of hear him say it on, on camera. Kid's not gonna hurt himself. My hand isn't broken. This is how my hand has healed since BKFC 38. Bottom line is I put so much work into this fight, everything. Traveling to spar, having fighters travel up here to spar. My diet, my preparation, <laughs> personal changes, upgrades, lots of sacrifice, lots of time and money went into this. And to be portrayed as a quitter is the worst possible outcome for me. It's the last thing I ever, ever want to be known or remembered. Oh, what? Majority of my fights are against people that no one else wanted to fight. And I stepped up the bat. It's a, it, it is a harsh, harsh, cruel business. Professional fighting. And I know that coming into it, I take that risk. We all take that game. And anything can happen. And, uh, Worst possible outcome is what took place this weekend. All my friends, family, and fans that traveled down or traveled up left and right to watch me compete. I can't express how sorry I am that that's how it ended. I have no control over that. You can clearly see I was upset. They had me escorted out of the arena. It, it's so upsetting. Um, not gonna let it break me. I don't let things break me. I'm feeling the feelings, I'm going through the emotions, but to be called a quitter when I have sacrificed and dedicated so much of my life to this business, in particular BKFC, you know, it's a massive letdown. I'm a businessman, I'm a company man. I always talk very highly of my bosses. I'm always grateful, show my gratitude. Very vocal about that. It was a big letdown, but I accept these things when I cross that line. Again, my, the biggest thing with me is I feel so bad for everyone who traveled down to watch that. There's no way I can pay you back. I'm a fighter, I don't quit. I'll continue to fight, because that's what I do, and no one can do a goddamn thing about it. But, just wanted to take a second to uh, express that. And uh, you know, I've been getting hated on so hard online, and it's whatever. Those people's opinions don't matter, and never have. Anyone who even has the slightest nerve to say something to a competitor, it's clear they don't have the balls to do what we do. And even still though, it's upsetting. Nothing I can do about it besides move forward. Don't let it fucking win. It's what we do as fighters. So I'm grateful for my family, my fans, my health, this beautiful gym, all its members. They show me so much love. You can't take that from me.
and uh, that's it. Live to fight another day. Fuck. It's frustrating, but life goes on. That's pretty sad, to be completely honest, and it is nice to see that he took the humble approach. Though I think he's trying to explain himself too much, I understand given the circumstances of him being painted as a quitter by the president of the organization. Chris was the first fighter signed out of New England, and he's currently on a six-fight losing streak. Now, I know Dave mentioned, oh, you go out there, you put it out on the line, and you fight. Exciting, you're always going to have a job here. But at what cost? This dude is 0-6 in his last six. He said yes to everybody you put in front of him. You probably even used him to promote the other heavyweights in the division, so it's kind of fucked. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you agree with Dave, or do you have some sympathy for Chris? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, I'll catch y'all in the next one.